Deal with your computer clutter to speed things up. Hi everyone, I'm Leo Notenboom for AskLeo.com. So when I talk about clutter, I'm not talking about the clutter on your desktop. As you can see, I generally maintain a very clean desktop. I put almost nothing on it. What you're looking at now is actually one of my example machines. But in reality, even my main machine on which I've got hundreds of different programs installed and all of my documents, my desktop is just as clean, actually, if not a little bit cleaner than what you see here. No, the clutter I'm talking about is, in fact, all of the different files and leftovers and cruft that can accumulate over time that, while it may not have a huge impact on computer performance, it can have some, and in the worst case, it can actually accumulate to the point of having a significant negative impact, particularly if your disk is getting full. Let's have a look at some of the options. The browser cache. These are files that your browser downloads in order to make your browsing experience faster. A great example is the Ask Leo logo that you'll find on every page of Ask Leo. It's downloaded once the first time you come to visit Ask Leo. Every time you visit another page on Ask Leo, rather than downloading that logo again and again and again, it knows. It kept a copy in what's called the browser cache. The browser cache then is much faster because it's not having to connect over the internet to go find and download that logo yet again. The problem? Well, the cache can fill up, which is fine. The browser knows how to manage it, but it's one of the common troubleshooting techniques when we're dealing with browser issues to clear the cache. The browser can get confused. One of the ways it can get confused, of course, is simply by being slower than one would expect. Rebuilding the cache from scratch by emptying it manually is one of the ways that we can at least get rid of this type of leftover and have it start clean. Temporary files. Another source of leftover cruft is temporary files. These are files that are created by a variety of programs, including Windows itself, that are intended to last only a short period of time, or maybe only while the program is running, or some other definition of temporary. The problem results from those files not being deleted when they're no longer needed. Now, most of the time, most programs that are creating temporary files will do the right thing. They will delete the files when the program is closed or when the files are no longer necessary. However, several things can conspire to make that not happen. For example, if a program crashes, well, it didn't have a chance to unload those temporary files. Sometimes there's actually a logical scenario that prevents a program from cleaning or deleting a temporary file because it's actually needed until the very last minute. So it just doesn't have the opportunity to clean things up. It's generally easy to remove temporary files, but it's generally not done automatically for you. Sometimes the temporary files are log files and there simply is no way to know that you might not need that log file a day, a week, or a month later. So it's left as a temporary file. There are also what I'll call intentional leftovers. The biggest example is windows.old. Windows.old is the version of Windows installed on your machine prior to the version you just upgraded to. It's left around so that you can recover files or settings or potentially revert, if that's what you want to do, to the old version of Windows. But the bottom line is it's left there intentionally. There is no automated process to get rid of it. There is no definition of how long you need to keep it. It's simply there taking up space. So one of the things to do if you're short on space would be to delete windows.old. You can do it manually, but there are tools. And that's what I want to talk about next. I actually recommend you periodically run the Windows Disk Cleanup Utility. It actually handles much of what we've talked about so far. It handles temporary files, windows.old, 
old copies of updates and upgrades that are no longer necessary and a variety of other things that Windows itself knows it really no longer needs as long as you're okay with some of the side effects like not being able to revert to an old version of Windows. You can free up an awful lot of disk space this way. And like I said, it is something that I recommend you run, if not periodically, regularly, say every six months or so, because things do accumulate. Now, more aggressively, the problem with Windows disk cleanup, of course, is that it really only knows about Windows. The things that I've talked about apply to a lot of other programs as well, and that's where tools like CCleaner come in. Now, I have, I'm of a mixed mind to recommend CCleaner these days, simply because it has become at least associated with installing things you weren't really intending to install when you install CCleaner, um, pups in other words. However, the tool itself remains a very good tool. So if you are comfortable with making sure that it's not going to install something else or it's something that you're willing to deal with should it do that by uninstalling, then CCleaner is actually a tool that was designed for this very purpose and it pays attention to more than just Windows itself. For example, if you have other browsers, it will clear those browser caches. If you have other tools, a certain set of other tools that CCleaner knows about, it will actually clean up things associated with those tools. So that is something that's well worth considering. And indeed, I do periodically run CCleaner myself from time to time. And finally, you know, keep an eye on your disk space usage. There are various tools to do that. Um, it is one of those things that by and large, you'll get away with for a very long time without it dramatically impacting your performance. But particularly as your disk fills up and Windows itself is struggling to manage files and move things around for you, it can impact your performance. So it is one of those things that, especially if you feel your machine is slower than it used to be, it's one of those things that's well worth investigating and well worth looking into and well worth cleaning up. For the original article on which this video was based, for links related, for comments, and of course for updates, visit askleo.com slash 126646. If you're watching this video on YouTube, be sure and hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the like thumbs up button if you found this video useful. Both of those things will help you get notified when there are more Ask Leo videos. I release them throughout the week. And they'll also help others who are searching for their solutions on YouTube. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is AskLeo.com.